sporting clays. It's often been called golfing with a shotgun. Indeed, from hole to hole, from station to station, from swinging a club to swinging a shotgun, from short shots to long ones, these two sports go together hand in glove. So stay tuned as we take a look at the Homestead Ruger Golf and Sporting Clays Championship. Chevy Trucks, Shooting Sports America. We're here at the Homestead Resort in Hot Springs, Virginia to take a look at a truly different kind of competition, an event that combines golf and sporting clays. Hi, I'm Gritz Gresham, shooting editor for Sports of Field magazine. And on behalf of the National Shooting Sports Foundation, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Chevy Truck Shooting Sports America. You know, hitting golf balls and shooting at clay targets are two games that seem worlds apart. Yet the closer you look, the more similar they become. Whether you look at the mechanics, the format, or even the strategies of both games. In this event, competitors will shoot at 18 sporting clay stations and then play 18 holes of golf. Let's join Tom Gresham, who's up on the Homestead Sporting Clays course right now. Thanks, Gritz. The Homestead Sporting Clays course is a true mountain course. The shooters here are going to face a variety of different targets, not only thrown from the right and from the left, but some are going to be thrown down below their feet, and some will come from the hillside oh. surrounding them, far above them. In addition, the course designers have taken advantage of the natural hazards here, which are trees. Some of these targets will be flying through the trees, and they'll have to shoot them when they appear in small openings. It should be a very exciting competition, and these shooters are going to be challenged. Station number 16 is a classic example of taking advantage of the terrain here. The course designer has laid this out so that we have four targets coming from the right to the left, but the targets are far below the shooters here. They'll have to stay down on the target, They're very much like a downhill lie. The tendency is to pick up your head, and if you do that, you definitely will not like what you see. Sandy Brady is in the box here. Station 16. Two shots at that one misses it. Sandy centers that one. Good shooting. It's really more difficult than it looks. It's a little bit of uh, drift on that target. Oh. Sandy's got the second one here. Four. Oh. Far here is three. If he breaks this one, he gets his point. Yes, and he does. Sandy breaks three of those four targets. Gets a par on station 16. That's good shooting for him. Station number 14 is an interesting station. They're shooting four single targets here, not pairs. These targets are coming from the left. You're going very fast, and they are barreling downhill. Larry Allison is up next. He shoots left-handed, oh. which could be a little bit of an advantage on this station. The gun moves into his cheek. The tendency is to take your head off the stock with this kind of station. So this could work out pretty well for Larry. Yeah, broke that first oh. target. Let's see what he's going to do. Gets the second one with the second shot. They get two shots at each target. Par is four. Need to break all four of them to get you two points. Oh. If you break three of these, you'll still pick up one point. All right, Larry did not get that one, so he has two. He's hit two of the three targets here. He needs to break this last target for them to get some points. Oh. He breaks it right in the center, first shot. Very good shooting, Mary Allison. Tough station, good shooting. This shoot is being scored under the Stableford system, which awards points based on an established par at each sporting play station. Shoot one less target than the par on the station, and you get one point. Shoot the par number of targets, and you get two points. For example, on a station that has a par of four, a shooter breaks three targets and scores one point. If a shooter breaks four targets, that's par, and he scores two points. In station number 10, the designers introduced a new element, wind, to this mountain course. Two pair, both report pair, right to left, but the wind is swirling. It's going to bounce those targets around mightily. Sue King is in the box. Sue breaks the last piece of that, breaks that one, she gets both of them. Sue, of course, is the executive director of the Women's Shooting Sports Foundation, a top sporting play shooter in her own right. She just caught the back end of that first turn. Oh! Par here is four. Needs to break all four of them. She gets that one. Here comes Low Bird and breaks that one. Sue shooting very aggressively. Excellent shooting on a particularly difficult station here, I'll tell you. Watch the partner. Sue's partner Good is shooting. Sherry Legate. Sherry is on the U.S. shooting team. 
really a terrific world-class shotgun shooter. Expect Sherry to do very well. Ready? These targets are bouncing around in the wind, but both of these women have enough experience to know the key of this oh. is to shoot fast. Do not let the wind have a chance to hit those targets. Sherry breaks her first one, and she gets the second one. If you hesitate, the targets start floating, the oh. wind will grab them, bounce them around, take them right out from under you. Oh, Sherry had a, a gun malfunction. Yeah. Something happened. It was very strange. She's going to have another oh. chance at that target. And she misses that one. She misses the second one. I tell you, she really uh, got flustered. Her timing got off when she had that gun malfunction. My gun's been acting up today. The second barrel is not firing for some reason. I don't know why. And that threw you off when you got... I'd, let's just, I'd like to say it did. <laughs> Actually, she's just not shooting very well today, and she's blaming it on the poor old gun. Station number 15 will have two true pair of teal. Normally not a difficult target, but in this win, those targets could be bounced around a bit. First up is going to be Dan Carlisle. Oh. Breaks both of those. Par on this station is four. Oh. And Dan breaks both of those. Very good shooting from Dan Carlisle. After the sporting plays portion of this event, the team of Dan Carlisle, one of America's great Olympic shooters, and Gene Graybeck is in the lead with a score of 77. Of course, this is only the first half of this combined tournament, with 18 holes of golf still to come. And those teams with the top golfers are waiting for their chance to rack up some big scores. Chevy Trucks, Shooting Sports America is brought to you by Marlin, Ruger, and Winchester. Welcome back to the homestand. The golf portion of this competition is about to begin. And joining me to cover the action is Peter Farica of Golf Digest magazine. Peter, good to have you. Thank you very much, Grit. It's great to be here. I've done some shooting in the past couple of days and noticed quite a few similarities between shooting and golf. Well, what do you think of this course? The course is a great mountain course. Donald Ross layout will be very enjoyable for the players. Well, you know, just like in the sporting plays section, this golf is scored on the Stableford system. Stableford system is a really fun tournament format and lends itself to a very aggressive style of play. Because there's no penalty for a high score, golfers are encouraged to shoot for the pin. You get one point for a bogey, two points for a par, three points for a birdie, and four points for an eagle. It's like we have Dan Carlisle lining up his shot now. Dan's a good example of somebody who's really worked on his golf game. Of course, he's an Olympic medalist in trap shooting and skeet. He's pulled that one a little bit left. He's going to have a tough up and down from over here, left to the green. Bill Bosley is having a great round. He's even so far. And they have 52 points at this point. Absolutely. He has an eight iron in his hand, 154 yards downhill for the wind with him. Good looking shot. That is. It's pretty much right on the stick, a little right of it. Just a little short. He's putting though. Got a birdie putt. But Joe Reynolds is gonna try and get a birdie here. What do you think he has there? About three feet and it's almost straight up here. He does. He has a little bit of a right to left break. Not much. The way he's playing today though, this should go in. Got it. Nice up and down from back there. Nice birdie. Larry Allison's next to play out of the front bunker. Just gonna wanna get it on the green and let the hill feed it right down towards the hole. Nicely done. Dan Carlisle has a tough up and down here. He's probably going to try and hit it just short of the green, have it just jump onto the green, and then roll down towards the pin. So that's a fast green in any direction, but especially from up here. Yeah, he's going to be by the pin. If he gets it on the green, he'll be by it. That's a great shot. Just got to get down there. That is just a tremendous shot. You can't do it any better than that. No, you really can't. You could give him a bucket of balls, and he'd see if he could do that again. I'm a shooter, I'm not a golfer. <laughs> so I feel pretty lucky so far. Yeah. Just keep up this good work. Having fun. We're having a good time. During a break in the action, we joined Peter for a few holes on the Homestead course. And it became clear to us how similar these two games really are. And how pointers in one sport can help in the other sport as well. Hey. Thanks, Fritz. As you can see, there's a large bunker right in the green here. Little course management can help you avoid that and a bogey. Take a little more club and definitely aim left of the bunker to take it out of play. You know, Peter, on these sporting plays courses around here, the trees are the big hazards. 
For instance, if you had this little group here and had a target coming from the left, you've got to make up your mind where you're going to break it. In this case, it better be after it passes the trees. So you've taken them out of play. Now Sam Wallace has the uh, birdie putt here, maybe about 18 feet. To try and pick up three points. Sam's a member here, so he should really know how this putt moves. All right, and this is a very makeable putt for him. Mm, slid right at the end. Had it on track. They say the putts usually break towards the mountains, but you got so many mountains around here, you don't know which way they're going to break. Mm, that's the very true. We're playing pretty well, consistent. We're getting points. That's the thing is to stay in play and get points accumulated. It's a total score, so you can't let one hole or two holes bother you. Oh, boy. Oh. That was a nice swing, Sherry, but it was a little offline. And so what we want to remember is the alignment is the, one of the most important things about golf. Mm -hmm. And you want to get behind the ball, look at where your target line is, and then come up to the line, pick a spot right in front of the ball, and line yourself up to that. You know, it's like that in shooting, too. A lot of beginning shooters make that mistake when they first walk up to their trap, or up into the station. They set up with the trap, not where they want to break the target. So it, what they need to do is look to see where the target's going to be broken at. Just like I need to look where I want that shot to be put, right. not where it went. Yep. It makes sense. Every year, Chevy Truck is pleased to demonstrate its support of America's sportsmen and sportswomen by presenting the Chevy Truck Shooter of the Year Award to an outstanding shooting athlete. This year, the award goes to a woman whose rise to the top of her sport truly qualifies her as a shooting star. She's a five-time Arizona State Women's Sporting Clays Champion, and in 1995 was the first woman to win the Arizona State Championship. She also was named to the National Sporting Clays Association's All-American Women's Team. This year, she soared to new heights and shook up the world of English sporting plays by becoming the first American woman to win the world championship. On behalf of Chevy Truck, we're pleased to name Linda Joy our Shooter of the Year for 1997. Welcome back to the Homestead Ruger Sporting Clays and Golf Championships. The field has now been narrowed down to the top six teams who will compete in this championship round, playing one hole of golf and shooting one station of sporting clays. That's right, Fritz. The golf hole is the number one hole on the Homestead course, a 506-yard par-5 uphill. Some of the big hitters can get home in two, so we may see some birdies and maybe even an eagle. On that final station of Sporting Clays, it combined a variety of shots into a single setting. It's going to challenge even the best of these top guns. We've got some great shooters and some great golfers out here. Now we'll find out which team has the best of both. First up on the championship round, Pat Boy Brady. <laughs> Team uh, uh, Pat Boy Brady and Mike Goodis did very well in the golf portion of this preliminary round. Pat Boy has hit a long draw down the middle. It is a monster drive. He is going to be happy with that. That may put him within reach of the green. All right, Cab Wallace up next, the father son team of Sam and Cab Wallace. Cab has let this one go to the right, pushed it, and then it started slicing. He's over in the trees. He'll have no shot at the green for his second. Cab's father, Sam Wallace, quite a golfer. Sam has pushed that to the right just a bit. May end up in the first cut. No, it's gone into the deep rough there. Not going to be able to get to the green on his second shot. Cab Wallace, he's in the... Uh up just below right of the green. He's going to get up and down here. That's a good looking shot here. Okay. That's going to run up close. Sam Wallace is putting for three points and a birdie. His son, Cab, is also putting for three points and a birdie. They have a conceivable six points here between them with two putts. He has about eight feet, fairly straight putt right at it. Just left it short. Dead in the throat. Dead in the throat, like you said, Gritz. Now Cab is looking at his butt, about oh, eight feet, partner, very awesome. similar to his father's from the other side of the hole, pretty much straight at it. May die a little bit to the right, right at the end. He's up here, so he can take a pretty good run at this. Hmm. Looks like he just left it out on the left edge of the hole going to tap in for his par. So that'll be four points for the Wallace team. 
Chris Ice is getting up here. Cliff from Clarksville, Tennessee. I tell you, he's a little bit more of a shooter than a golfer, but I'll tell you, looking at that swing, he hadn't spent all of his time at work. Just hit a dandy shot out there. You may be able to reach the green on this arch out there. We're the Cinderella team here, I guess. We're the unknown, so if we do any good, we're, we're going to be happy. We're happy to be here. Dan Carlisle, U.S. Olympic shooter, new to golf, took up golf a few years ago, and uh, got serious about it. Came to it with the uh, athletes coordination, hand eye coordination, and dedication to practice. Let's see what Dan can do. Yeah! Dan has killed that ball. Who is that guy? Huh? A little bit of a draw, right in the middle of the fairway and long. Dan's partner is uh, Gene Graybeck. Gene is a little bit more the golfer of the crew, that's for sure. Gene's been giving Dan golf lessons. Dan's been giving Gene shooting lessons. Seems to have worked out because these guys are pretty much at the top of the heap of this competition right now. Oh, Gene's hit a monster drive. Leaking just a bit. Lee may have gotten himself behind the trees there. We'll just have to see. This is a real big putt for the Carlisle and Baybeck team. If he can get this in, his teammates are real tight for a birdie anyway. If he can get, knock this one in, and with the shooting ability this team has, it uh, looks very good for them. Good follow through, but he came up a little bit short. Dan Carlisle had a great opportunity there to maybe uh, distance himself and Gene from the rest of the field, but they came up a little bit short on this. If Bill Bosley can knock this in, they'll stay pretty close to this team, and then it will again come down to the shooting portion. Got about five feet right up the hill. He needs to make this one grits. Yeah, Bill certainly realized that too, because it'll distance him considerably if he misses his butt. He's got it, right in the heart of the cup. Cliffside's putting for birdie. He's got about 18 feet downhill. It's going to break a little bit his left to right, Chris. I don't think you'll have any trouble getting it there, slick as it is. Oh, in the hole. Beautiful yeah. putt from Cliff. Just Excellent. in the left side door there. Two points for Bill for the par, three points for Cliff for the birdie. The team of Bosley and Sites has five points, puts them one point ahead of Wallace and Wallace. Gene Gravick now putting for birdie on three points. He knocks it right in. Gravick has his three points. Now Dan Carlisle just has to tap his in for the par, and they will have five points. So after the golf competition, the team of Dan Carlisle and Gene Graybeck were tied with the team of Bill Bosley and Cliff Sites with five points. Three other teams had three points each. Stay tuned for the championship round. Welcome back to the homestead. On its final sporting clay station of the championship round, shooters will face six targets. Two singles, a single rabbit, and then a single bird, and then a pair of rabbits, and then a pair of birds. First up is Pat Foy Brady, the team of Brady and Goodis. They came into this with one point out of the golf. They really need to perform well here. And Pat Foy misses that first rabbit. That's unusual for him. He's a hunter. This is... Uh, Station have six birds, a par is four. Oh! There he goes, breaks that bird. All right! If the shooter was to break all it, six targets here, he could pick up four points for his right. team. That would be the equivalent of a right. right. So Pat Foy has Boom. one target so far. Breaks both of them. Ah. Very good shooting. All right, Pat Foy has three Boom. targets at this point. Breaks both those birds with a single shot, but that's going to give him three points. That is a birdie on this station. The important thing for Sandy Brady here is he wants to beat his dad, Pat Foy Brady. Oh! He breaks that first rabbit very well. Right now, the Brady brothers are tied with their dad, Pat Foy Brady, so they're hoping to pick up one extra point just so they can beat the top. Sandy breaks that bird authoritatively. Very good shooting. Yeah, he's right in the middle of both of those. Okay, now let's see what he can do with the pair. Yeah, that's right. If this uh, this pair rabbit slow down at the end. Oh! Nice, nicely yeah. done. He, he waited that one out. He waited it out. He waited till those targets slowed down, and then he just hammered them. 
All right, last pair. Oh! Oh, he caught a piece of that first one. So he ends up with a, a five targets on that. That gives him a birdie three points for this station. Very good shooting for Sandy Brady. All right, Cliff Sykes is up in the box next. He wants to stretch as far as he can because he knows that Gray Bear and Carl Isle are coming up next. Breaks that rather very strongly. His team has six points at this juncture. They are in the lead. Oh. It's the tail end of that target, I'll tell you, but he did get it, and that counts as a hit. That's right, he swings like a sporting clay shooter. He gets these two rabbits, and they'll be in good shape. Oh. Let them stop. Yeah, Ellie picked up one of those rabbits. He has three broken targets at this point. One pair to go. He breaks both of them. They end up with a birdie for three oh. points. He got one of them. That's going to give him a par. They pick up two points for his shooting, one point for his partner. That's three points for the team. Add that to the five ahead. They end up with an eight. They are the leaders at this point. Chevy Trucks Shooting Sports America is brought to you by. Chevy Trucks, Budweiser, and Federal. Welcome back to the homestead. Dan Carlisle is in the box, Olympic trap shooter, Olympic ski shooter, one of the best shotgun shooters in the world at this time. And he seems anxious to get to it. He does. He hustled into that box, didn't he? He was ready. He centers that rabbit. He has to have one point here. He has to make a bogey to tie. Oh. He gets a par. Moves. All right. In the middle. that one. If he breaks his next pair, that's going to be their par. They would win. Oh. He's got he breaks it. both of those. He's putting it on a shooting exhibition here. Dan Carlisle is just, he cannot wait to get to those birds. Watch this. Oh. He goes Come straight, on. a perfect ah. score. Gets his eagle, tears him up. Dan Carlisle comes through at the end. A great score. The team of Gene Grayback, Dan Carlisle win. Hey, guys, uh, pretty strong. Thank you. Thank you. I have a little, uh, do a little better this year than last year. A little better about shooting this year. You shot well in there. Thank you. Thank you. I was proud of him. He expected me to hit him. This is my part of the deal right here. <laughs> he did his job out there on the golf course with you. We're real happy. I'm very happy. Dan, Gene, once again, on behalf of the Homestead and Club Resorts, I'd like to present these champion trophies to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. And on behalf of Sturm Ruger, we'd like to present each of you with a Ruger red label over and under shot. A great tournament. Going into the final Sporting Clay shoot-off, two teams were dead even, and it took the great shooting of Dan Carlisle to put his team in the winner's circle. See you next time on Chevy Trucks Shooting Sports America.